Hello all, I am occasionally known as Dead Addict, about once a year or so. And uh, with me I have uh, some of the senior staff here and important people that help make this thing happen. Um, right now I believe this year our current uh, staff count is over 250 people. Um, and these people awesome work kids. their asses off harder than anyone I've ever seen. Um, not only at DEF CON but put in stupid, stupid countless hours uh, volunteer time before the conference and uh, work 16, 18 hour days, some of them, to, to help make this happen. Uh, DEF CON 1 was 100 people, so our staff is uh, two and a half times the size of DEF CON 1. And, um, you know, there was a couple of volunteers to begin with in the first year, but uh, at this point we have um, a large number of teams. And um, organizing DEF CON organizers is the most difficult thing uh, imaginable. Um, I'm thrilled everyone here got grabbed and uh, agreed to come because uh, about half of those that uh, said they would uh, are off running, putting out uh, emergencies and uh, making the con run right now. Um, probably best that everyone's not on stage because you know you don't want that a single bomb and, and DEF CON's <laughs> gone forever, so that's not good. We're all we're all somewhat expendable here. Um, so I'm, uh, this is going to be a pretty informal uh, presentation. Um, so I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves and talk about what they do um, and the teams they're on, and we'll we'll have a um, uh, maybe share some interesting anecdotes about uh, things that happen on the teams that people are on, and um, we'll chat amongst ourselves. And um, I guess I'll start. Uh, I'm on the press team. Uh, I'm second in command of the press team, which is. 20 some people at this point. We have over 150 media organizations that show up at DEF CON um, from all over the planet, um, over a dozen video crews and news crews, and uh, we're, we're very press friendly. And um, pretty much unless you have a hidden um, recording device or are trying to covertly tape uh, people, which is really inappropriate, we're, we're happy to have the press. Uh, the exception is local media. Um, th they're not allowed. Um, and uh, I think that's a very good judgment call. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit? Yeah. Uh, on, on which part? I, 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 I spewed a lot of bullshit there, so I, you want to pick away which part is bullshit there? Well, you're part of the press, so pretty much all of it probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I handle the press, so you're right. Uh, um. They did repeal don't ask, don't tell, but don't tell. <laughs> and just wash your hands when you're done. You, you licked my hands after what? Uh, anyway. No. <laughs> anyway. Save that for Q&A. <laughs> so. I'll start over there. Okay. Whoa. Info booth, please. You. <laughs> okay, I sat down here because there was no microphone. That didn't work. <laughs> Basically, uh, I run the information booth in that. We are the people that try to collect all the information from all the departments of what's going on, where it's going on, how's it working right now and then disseminate it as requested. So you ever tried to get information out of a bunch of hackers? <laughs> it can be real interesting getting it. We have a staff uh, this year of 12, and next year will probably be at least 14. The requirements to be, if you want to be an information booth goon, is you've got to have been to the con at least two years. So you're not confused of what's going on and where it's going on. <laughs> we still have. And it, we still have people that have that problem. And then you can uh, ask us if somebody knows you. It's an even more benefit. But our job is to get the information out of where everything is. So if you're looking for the bathroom, the food, or tamper uh, prevention contest, it doesn't matter. The we probably have an answer. Our secondary function is disinformation. You come up with something stupid, we'll give you a stupid answer. When, when did the team start? How, how did it come about? What, what? Hold, hold your question for one minute. Uh, DEF CON uh, 8, we had the conversation. It was actually uh, Romer and DA uh, come up with the idea that we ought to have one place to quit bothering dispatch, which is the information booth. And DEF CON 9 was the first one I ran. There was a total of three of us. And that was quite interesting. If you went to DEF CON 9, it was fun. 
<laughs> yeah. and, and, any any beautiful, brilliant anecdotes uh, uh, to tell? Any any glory stories or, or okay? Number shame one question today in that uh, we actually started a drinking game today, which we had to cancel. It's where's the pen and teller? <laughs> <laughs> So every time we were asked, uh, my morning shift team and that was kind of stumbling after they left. <laughs> where, where are they? <laughs> Drink. 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 So for those of you who don't know where Penn & Teller is, you walked by it coming down to the con, go back out like you're heading to the casino. It'll be on the right-hand side. It's a big ticket booth. The Q&A is over here, what's on the map says Q&A 4, that's Penn and Teller. Track 4's Q&A is over at Penn and Teller. I don't handle it, I just give the information out. So where is Peter Tug? I really should be talking. I just covered that. But thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. There's some discussion about You're rocking the Next. 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 All right. Should be Hey, uh, how's it going? I'm Grifter. I run the... Uh, louder. Uh, louder? You Speak into the mic. How's it going? All right. Uh, I'm Grifter. I run the um, events as well as the villages, so uh, making sure that those areas or events get space, <laughs> that they get hooked up with the hotel if a bar is required, which it often is, um, that that... Uh, all of the logistics of that gets worked out. Um, a lot of the work that um, my team does, which is, consists of me and two other guys, uh, is all done prior to the con, and then you know we come here and just make sure basically that things are continuing to run smoothly and that uh, that they show up. How, it's uh, it's it's pretty sweet because it's like go to all the parties and make sure that they're great. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't suck. Um, also, uh, I said the villages, the villages kind of started out of, um, when we were over at the Riv, uh, we had sky boxes that looked down onto the, onto the floor over the contest area and, uh, and the CTF. And so we wanted to do something, you know, interesting with those. We wanted people to try to provide some kind of content or give something back to DEF CON to get a sweet space for their group to use. Um, and I think it was the, the lockpick guys, the tool guys, were the first guys who said, hey, we'd like to do a lockpick village where we set things up and everybody comes in. What? Sky yeah, Sky Talks as well. They ended up in there. Um, but they said, oh, we want to do something and we want to be able to you know, have a space where we can just teach everyone. We'll put out tables, tons of picks and locks. And they did that. Uh, wireless Village followed Sky Talks. Um, I mean, it, it was a fantastic space. And then when we moved over here, um, we kept a lot of those things going. We just were able to give them larger spaces and, and the ability to, to host more uh, people. So uh, it's worked out pretty well. If you're interested in, you know, throwing a party or, uh, or using some space next year or in later DEF CONs, then uh, just reach out to me, grifter at DEF CON dot org. And uh, tell me what you want to do, and we'll get you some space. It's when, open to everybody. You just got to have a great idea. When do you start uh, planning? When, when do you start working? Please hold the questions to the end. <laughs> <laughs> answer me. It's my job to ask you embarrassing start questions. Um, Please hold your answer. Normally, I start to reply to those requests in January. Um, I, I figure that once this show ends, I, I'm allowed to ride out the rest of the year. <laughs> That's about as much time as I need to recover. So. It's all you. Um, I'm Romer. I run the vendor area here. Um, I, I've said this before, and people always think I'm kind of joking, but it's absolutely true. I have the easiest job at DEF CON. Um, <laughs> it, it, no, you, re you really do. <laughs> it, it is the easiest job at Seriously. DEF CON. Um, no, we, we do <laughs> all of our work leading up to DEF CON. Um, basically, we start um, with our staff. And by the way, you guys have fucking big staffs. Seriously. Yeah, I we, mean, I've got I've got four people. You guys have like these giant staffs. I've obviously done a bad job of getting enough goons on my team. Um, We're very hey, efficient. Can I volunteer? If you want, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's not hire? our fault nobody wants to work with you. Yeah, always are. Touche. So, what we do is basically we start in uh, typically February or March time frame, and we start opening up uh, vendor registration on April fifteenth. It's Tax day every year, same same day. That's why I can remember it. It makes it easier. Um, and then 
from about April 15th <laughs> until yesterday, uh, this is a part-time job. We put in about 20 hours a week uh, getting everything together, working with the hotel here to find out, you know, like if you've been in the vendor area, you saw the uh, Irvine Underground, the Hacker Sticker, uh, yeah, Hacker Stickers mm -hmm. guys have that big banner hanging from the ceiling. So they uh, called me and said, we want to actually hang something from the ceiling. I said, I have no idea if you're allowed to do that or not. So we get in touch with our contact here at the hotel, we get them together, figure it out, and this may not be shocking to you, that was not free. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, do you, and does it meet what? fire code? <laughs> what? Does it meet fire code? I hope so. God. They haven't shut us down yet. Stop so. with the fire code. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Well, the, that's the other thing that, you know, we have to build the, the diagram of how the, how the tables are going to be set up in that room. In and really small font, by the way. <laughs> but early. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier than some people. Um, but once we get the room layout set up, we have to send it to the Clark County Fire Marshal to determine whether or not it's going to work out for that room and, and not get the whole conference shut down because we were too dumb to do it the right way. Um, but the great thing about being the vendor lead is after yesterday when everybody sets all their stuff up, all our job is for the rest of DEF CON is calling the, ri the Rio to get garbage out of the room. So I get to go and drink and have fun for the entire rest of the week while everybody else is working. We, we all hate you. <laughs> um, what, what, what makes you say yes or no to, to a vendor? And what, what, what are the sort of the vendors that we have disallowed in the, in the past? I, I'm sorry, but you're my new hero. You are a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> you get to drink the entire DEF CON and entire do nothing. Entire DEF CON. And are you hiring? Do you need <laughs> yeah, some? Yeah, no. We'll, we'll help you staff up I'll, your team. I'll transfer right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the easiest job here. I was going to go to Knock because they got it pretty easy, but shit. Knock <laughs> has, has couches. Though. Oh, really? <laughs> um, actually, the vendor process has been something that over the years, we, we've done good and bad. And we, we, I mean, it's, it's taken us a long time to get to the point where I think the attendees actually like most of the vendors that are in there now. And, and we've had some bad ideas. I've had some vendors that I, I'll get an application from them. And I'm like, oh, that, that'll be cool. And then they get here and it was, it was a bad idea. And you're like, wow. Give us an do. example. Name names. Yeah, name names, please. The, the, the e-cig people, the hacksaw chicks. Uh, the, the oh, yeah. But you, you, you didn't you did place the hacksaw chicks, uh, uh, which is uh, some oh, softcore God, pornography, yeah. right next to Hackers for Jesus. So yes, the, the yeah. placement yeah, there was well played. Well played. Well played. <laughs> Souls were saved. That was I, I'm, the light versus the cross. <laughs> I, I had managed to forget about the hacksaw chicks until you brought that up. I know. That now it's back I'm going to punch head, you in the balls yeah. later for that. But yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've certainly made mistakes. For, uh, I don't know. I mean, for people that, have, that this is your first DEF CON, you really don't know this. This, but for folks that have been coming for years, um, probably 10 years ago, all that was for sale in there was T-shirts. It was 90% T-shirt yep. vendors. Um, and then Ira. <laughs> and Ira. And Ira. Um, <laughs> So I, I'd like to just bring up a, a, a amusing anecdote uh, regarding the, the, the soft core awful, awful pornography. No, stop. Oh, remember, no, no, stop, stop. No, 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 no. It, I it, will leave the room if you say this. No, it, 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 it's fine and glorious. So, so someone wanted their, their CD signed by, by one, of the, one of the women that was involved with this. Yes. And um, she punched him in the face. <laughs> Because it was a blank CD that had the thing written on it. And, uh, <laughs> sell, if your business model is selling content, uh, you can expect to sell one. Um, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Somebody ripped it, put it online, and then people were bringing blank actually, CDs actually, up. It's, it's DEF CON 20. I think we can, we can actually tell the, a lot more. So <laughs> let's be perfectly honest. Yes, let's. DEF CON, Hacks or Chick thing came out, and there was middling feelings about this. And uh, so somebody figured out that it was possible to put it in a uh, pay-per-view system for the entire hotel. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and someone else figured out how to go to room to room and unlock the pay-per-view system. It wasn't actually the pay-per-view system. Oh, it's fine. It's unlocked. Everyone got to see it. <laughs> Point being. So here we got, here Which we literally have really. like, they're trying to sell this product. And we're giving it away for free because we don't approve of the product, which is actually a really interesting way to deal with your illicit 
<laughs> issues. <laughs> to to be fair to you, just to, to liquidate it to the, to uh, the individuals actually, who did that. Guys, to be perfectly fair and honest, uh, DefCon that was one of our mistakes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we right. didn't really. No one at DefCon. No one on DefCon staff. It, it was involved. one of those. Wow, this looks like a really great idea to have a pornography vendor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it has a silver lining. Yeah. Oh wait, what's the message we're sending here? <laughs> Uh, DEFCON is not about exploitation of women. Uh, DEFCON is not about any of that stuff. And we realized very quickly that that was a really dumb idea. Yep. And right. Didn't yeah. do yeah. anything like that again. Right. But the best way yeah. to get rid of it. Like I said, Robert was very it. good about it. I, and I, 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 just, I just want to say that, you know, if, if there, are, it, it, was, it was a bad idea. It was a good idea at the time. We apologize for it. We're human, most of us. I, I will be um, honest. I do not apologize. <laughs> 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 I, it was a fuck up, but I'm not apologizing. It, it was gross. <laughs> the best way to get rid of something you don't like is to make everybody not care about it anymore. Yeah. And that's what we did, and it worked, and they're gone now. Fuck so, them in their uh, fucking ways. Well, there, listen, listen, just let me say something here. Okay, there is a silver lining to that, though. Because of the uh, acquired access to the television channels, though, we, did get we, we started hosting <laughs> the DC DEF movie yeah. channel but, uh, for, uh, for years following that. Yeah. So but once we had is, access we're not to about the exploitation of women, do. we're not about second-class citizens or anything uh, like that. Uh, if I can, like, just take a well, I want to welcome the Fed contingent who rolled in. This is totally not DEFCON related per se, but it's totally hacker chick, Hacksaw Chicks related. Um, we obviously got one of the DVDs, and uh, Mike gave a new employee the Hacksaw Chicks DVD and told him it was his training DVD. Oh, no. <laughs> That, that doesn't sound HR compliant but, for any By the way, the, the person that we're talking about is my second in command in the vendor area, Wad. <laughs> and he goes home, like sits down in front of his TV with his, with his notebook <laughs> to start taking notes. <laughs> and it starts up and he's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> okay, and you wonder why no one wants to work with you. <laughs> I, um, I now like to talk about the people who poop themselves at DEF CON since we're in the whole... Uh, oh, oh, no, no, no. And we're moving along. Yeah, moving so lock, moving lock. Lock. Remember, info booths got way too much info on something. There's the NSA. There's the NSA of DEF CON. The info booth. To the NSA of DEF CON. Okay, go lock. Go. All right. Go. Let's let Lock talk because that's who you guys all came to hear anyway. <laughs> yeah, because he didn't give like three talks about the network already today. I know, thanks. I, I would like to thank you for, for helping arrange uh, putting the EFF and NSA right next to each other. That, that was uh, glorious and, and very appropriate. Did you do that? I live to serve. I hope they have long conversations together and fall in love. And I, by the way, I put Harbor Hacking Village right next to them too, so it's like a. It's Actually, a there was a three... of small explosives <laughs> knifing of each other. So free entertainment is what you're saying. <laughs> a helicopter landed on the roof and some people disappeared. So. Wasn't that DEF CON 4? The EFF has helicopters? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, so uh, I'm Lockheed. I run the network operations team here as well as DCTV. Yes, we're still trying to get it working. Sorry. Um, been doing this for 17 years. Uh, we have our largest staff this year because it's DEF CON 20. Uh, because it's 165,000 square feet that we have to cover at any given moment. Uh, so we're up to 14 people on staff this what year. The fuck? I know. I'll, I'll give you my throwaways. I'm getting more people. All right. <laughs> yeah, but how many are there are now some vendor staff openings if anybody wants to be a game. Because I need more staff. We, we all want on your, on your team. That, the Slack team? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All, all please. If I wish. Your job requirement is being able to drink and call for garbage removal. I can. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo. Easy enough. We're all semi-qualified for that. <laughs> <laughs> the first part, very qualified. All right. Um, yeah, so we, you know, much like the other teams here, we tend to start our work uh, in January. We work throughout the year working with the hotel, the AV folks, um, trying to get requirements from various people. Vendors is usually pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Our job's easy. Why wouldn't we be the good? The contest <laughs> group is still learning. Not you, Grifter. Oh, no. The other. The contest, you mean, you mean Pyro, who was supposed to be here talking to you, but decided <laughs> not to show up? Why, yes, that one. He's drunk. <laughs> uh, and so we, you know, it's a, it's a ramp up from, from January till now. The closer you get, the more time we spend uh, putting this together. 
And it's, you know, it's, it's politics with the hotel, it's relationships with the hotel, working with Caesar security, making sure we're protecting each other from each other. <laughs> um, and working with all the groups here to make sure we understand what everybody wants, make sure it's not too insanely crazy, um, and that we, you know, we can set expectations. Everybody arrives knowing what to expect, and it just happens. And uh, this year came together pretty damn well, actually, uh, save for a couple vendors. But see, you check out, so they just call dispatch and then get to me. So right. it's great. Well, it's not a garbage call, therefore not your responsibility. <laughs> so basically, they give us a Nextel that we're supposed to carry around with us so that we can communicate with each other. Right. I got mine yesterday, turned it off, threw it in my room, and I had to <laughs> Ah, the battery's dead. I understand. Exactly. Um, that is so the, the DEF CON network, I, I believe I might have coined the phrase the most hostile network on the planet. Um, oh, is that your fault? I, yeah, no, I okay, think so. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Up the, in press. The press loves that shit. Um, is that complete bullshit? Um, Would you say? <sighs> it's, it, it certainly used to be true when it was really a giant free for all. Um, I mean, even back in the day, my Internet Explorer got exploited by the GOATSE cash poisoning problem. That was awesome. <laughs> and you were in the knock. Uh, no, I, that was at the we, Alexis we, Park. We I was roaming purpose, around. By the way. Okay. Okay. I was testing. In the knock. No. We did that on purpose to you, by the way. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> they open source that. Uh, <laughs> Um, um, how, how, how has our bandwidth uh, uh, increased over the years, and, and is it saturated ever? Um, I'm sorry, sir, that's classified. <laughs> so at DEF CON 4, which was uh, where I first started staffing, we had two ISDN lines. We got, we got one B channel on one line working. We had 64K. Yeah. So a couple, a couple dial-ups would have been a little I'm, bit more effective. Uh, and that I'm was until somebody stole the modem. Before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was running for an afternoon, and that was, you know, that was a milestone, because my first DEF CON was DEF CON 3, and I'm sitting in the audience, and there was supposed to be a network, but you know, it didn't happen, and I'm sitting there going... Is it wasn't me. I did, it wasn't is something me. electrical burning? <laughs> is this cocaine? Uh, no, it ended up being the router, apparently, oh. was melting down. Um, well, uh, so it was after that that Jeff goes, hey, you want to run the network next year? And, and I, 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 that's pretty much how all the teams began, is there was an organic need, and yeah. very often someone would step up to the plate and say, hey, I'm willing to do that, and then the well, suckers were, were tied to life for this. Uh, I this yeah, no, 100%. We all laugh. I mean, if you guys remember, like, DEF CON 6, 7, 8, there was no vendor application process. <laughs> it was people showed up and started selling shit, you know? I mean, so, and I mean, the vendor area and CTF was all in this one giant mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. And then we started realizing we're gonna have to actually control this somewhat. Otherwise we're gonna have soft core porn or something <laughs> being sold. So yeah, it, it was totally, uh, uh, oops, I guess we need to do that. Yep. Okay, so I think the, the most ironic story I have for this year is, you know, you've got all the naysayers out there. We, we've spent a number of years actually making part of the DEF CON network secure and safe for people to use with average expectations, same as they would at home, for example. Um, and so there's always people going, no, no, it's a trap, you know, don't use the DEF CON wireless, you'll get owned, even the secure stuff, uh, you know, right? It's a trap. It is, just for you. Um, and so the funny part is, as soon as people get here, you, you hear people in the, in the hallways going, oh, I'm not going to use a wireless. Yeah. Oh, but we see this GSM network called Ninja something. Let's connect to that. Because <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, secure, I'm sure. Yeah. If you see an AP that says it's FBI or FU or something, probably not going to Or free public Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> so Lockheed, what happened to the Wi-Fi puppy? The Wi-Fi puppy is not here this year. I know, I know. Yeah, whose fault is that, Lockheed? Heather's. Oh. Oh man. She's a, she's Threw on her a, right under the bus. the bus. I did. Yeah. Tell them about the Wi-Fi puppy. Yeah. No, no, no. Come on. No, no. Wi-Fi puppy. We're good. I'll, I'll let Sunshine go on next. She's more. She's better looking than I am. <laughs> Bare, barely. But. Wait, wait. I do want to point out that we have a a girl on staff. You have a girl. A girl. On staff. A girl. girl. What girl? Girl. No. 
woman. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, yeah. A female, <laughs> female of the human variety. <laughs> now, now, now if you had a minority and a handicapped, you'd have all the boxes right? checked. <laughs> yeah. It's token time, yeah. right? <laughs> That's right. Me- mentally actually, doesn't count. Not yeah. mentally. Yeah, you, so you are. you need actually. to hire me. I actually have a blue, a blue placard. I'm so injured. Go ahead. Hello. I'm Sunshine. I run the swag department. Um, this is my third year. I've been on staff for seven years now. I started with Falker down in the info booth. And um, I think, like, most people would be surprised about, uh, we have 20 people on staff this year. Sorry. <laughs> wow. We had eight people on staff last year, and I don't think any of them were breathing on Sunday. So in order to tend to the lines and get people through and get their swag in time, we decided to really shore up and get a lot of hackers helping out. So. Um, I guess uh, as far as planning, when do we start planning? I think we started planning DEF CON 21 last week, was it? Pre- oh, my. <laughs> it's like, no, it's 20, it's 20 this no, year. like last week we started thinking about different yeah, things that we could, yeah, we start really early and we go throughout the year trying to think about efficiencies we can gain, things that we can do to help get people through the line and get the product that they want and um, like, we're a staff of uh, volunteers and, like I said, hackers. We're not merchandise folks, but we, we try. <laughs> um, we understand. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are once a year anyways, merch people. Yeah. So I guess that's pretty much it for us. Awesome. Yeah. You guys, though... Are, are way different than it used to be. I mean, yeah. it used to be. Oh God, yeah. Uh, it, uh, the, the selling of like shirts here was a, a clusterfuck, like uh, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. which is, which is true with many of the departments before they were departments. The right. the area was a complete mess. Um, yeah, no exception there. Yeah. So. Yeah, like where we started off with that room. I, I mostly remember the room at the Riv where they were just throwing shirts out of boxes. Now we have a storeroom where everything's organized by size and um, you know, we're able to figure out what we have in, in stock immediately and you know, you get things going left. through a lot more variety as well. Next thing you know, you get have order takers in line with iPads like an in and out. <laughs> oh. Actually, have That's you guys one been to the many. casino? <laughs> by the way, anybody here from back east? Raise your hand. Have you all been to In-N-Out? Been to In-N-Out. Okay, you need, there's an In-N-Out here in Vegas. It makes White Castle look like you're eating a turd. And that is the biggest lie that anybody is going to see. Oh, yeah, the throwdown. <laughs> Jesus Christ, White Castle rules. No, Fat Burger. I need an egg on that shit. Five guys. All, all y'all need to put the crack pipe down because you're clearly not in reality. So many jokes. <laughs> so many jokes. Seriously, go to, go to In-N-Out Burger. Get yourself a double-double animal-style extra grilled onions. Go to town. Yeah, you're crazy. Die happy. So I'm Agent X. Uh, I run speakers for DEF CON. I started doing it at DEF CON 8. I just had to do the math. Uh, I think I was... Alone, weren't you? Yeah, well, it's I, think I, was tw- I think I was 20. Um, I'd been coming since 6. And... Uh, my first job at eight that was like a real goon job was selling t-shirts, which in, I'd like to buy a t-shirt. Do you have some money? Okay, here you go. And that was it. It was, it was sketchy. Were they your t-shirts? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was, it was pretty interesting. So, um, the first, so back before eight, speakers came to DEF CON. They were invited. <laughs> and we just kind of, I don't even know what happened. They just appeared on stage magically at some time during their allotment. We beat them with sticks into the room. Well, so this is the interesting thing. Sometimes they showed up. We were all younger, and we drank a lot. So the first couple of years, it wasn't really about like optimizing the process. It was really about making sure the speaker was alive, not in prison, sober, <laughs> and maybe prepared to present. Since when the hell did sober come into this equation? Well, no, no, no. I mean, like, I mean, like, not. I mean, like, not falling down drunk. With, with oh, I didn't say, yeah, I'm not sober, but I, <laughs> D- Defcon sober. It, it I remember kind of the exact condition. moment that sober, sober came, came into, into play with Dan Kaminsky. <laughs> no, it didn't. He's still drunk. So anyway, um, so basically, over the years, the first year, 
I was basically tasked with running speakers. They're like, we need a volunteer. <laughs> and they all looked at me and I said, oh, okay. And you said yes. And I said yes. Cause oh. I was, and, and we all laughed at you and went, he bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were there. You were there. You were there. Yeah, it was a st- stupid move. <laughs> anyway, so I said yes. Uh, and so for at the AP, I ran three tracks for three days by myself. <laughs> <laughs> then I decided the next year I should invite somebody to help me. <laughs> and, and basically I learned that I need more people every year because... I can only kill so many people a year. Just give us the oh, number. Just give us the fucking number. 25. Oh, 25. Oh. By the way, I can not tell you, I am so glad that none of my guys are in here. Because <laughs> if they found out that I could have a bigger staff and they could work less hours, they would shoot me in the head for what I do to them. By, by the way, at the end of DEF CON 8, we found him naked in the shower with a stack of Oreo cookies rocking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Crying and eating Oreo cookies. Romer? Romer? <laughs> After DEF CON 8, after having to run three tracks? No, you found me in a different state in the someplace else. <laughs> we have photos. So. Yes, that's fine. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and basically now I am very lucky to have a very experienced staff of people that know how to deal with speakers um, and all their <laughs> issues. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Uh, and, and, you know, frankly, we, 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 we took an opposite approach to how to handle speakers. Uh, all speakers are equally shit, and we don't care, and we hate you. No one is important. Yep. No one is important, especially the speaker. My comment was directed at the speakers, but right. not you. So, and it's great. It works really well. They basically know their, their place, and, uh, <laughs> and they stay there. And, and we don't coddle them, and we don't try and do anything nice for them. Uh, and we, we say mean things about yeah. them. Sell that shit. Sell it. Anybody looking <laughs> no. to speak next year? Because okay, we're going to have so, some openings. So, so a couple years ago, this guy comes up to me. He's like, you know, I've been to a bunch of conferences. Uh, you know, I've been to TED. And I've been to, like, you know, about fucking other conferences. I don't even know. Hope. Hope. Yeah, Hope. Oh. Hope's a good example. Anyway, he goes to a bunch of conferences. He's like, and you know, I really like the way you handle speakers. It's really... <laughs> It's really honest. And I'm like, yeah. Now get on fucking stage. (laughs) Then X turns around and says, are you making eye contact with me right now? Look away. Underneath the suit, he's actually wearing a leather bustier. Yeah. He's got some knee-high leather boots and a riding crop. Yeah. So this would be a a good time for me to say uh, I'd like to thank all all the speakers uh, over the years. And without them, there'd be no DEFCON. No, I mean, DEFCON wouldn't be anything without speakers. So thank you. One thing I want to say about this, though. If you walk around and you're talking to speakers, everybody's like, Agent X is a dick. It's because of, of exactly what you're saying. But one of the things is they've got a rule that if you're going to be a speaker, you have to show up in the speaker ready room 40 minutes before your talk. God fucking damn it. The first time that I spoke at DEF CON, I'm, I'm on staff and I say, I don't have to do that. He's like, yeah, you fucking have to be there 40 minutes early. Where the hell were you 40 minutes before this talk? I, oh, oh, you want to know where I was 40 minutes before this talk? I know exactly where you were. Not in the speaker ready room. That's right. I was not in the speaker ready room. Actually, this is really, this is totally, this is total comeuppance on me. I was informed that I was in a talk five minutes before the talk, which is classic DEF CON. Went, There's no Wait, excuse. Man, There's a, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There's yeah. no excuse. We had a yes. conference call. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, you were there. I, I was not on the conference call. You were absolutely on the conference, on the conference call. Oh, that conference call. <laughs> I was drunk. I was drunk on that call, dude. Oh, that's, I said yes. Never say yes. Anyway. So yeah, I have this great staff. They they do pretty much all the work, and then I fly around in a suit and go ooh and say stupid things. And um, yeah, and one of the cool things that we've been doing, and it's it's actually security. Well, you're representing security, but the other part that's security. Um, we've we've had to handle a lot of like what I call annoying high touched speakers, and so. And we do crowd control. We don't do crowd control, but we're on speakers, and crowd control influences how many people are in a talk, you know, because this room is just packed with people right now. And uh, the um, and it's really awesome that we have all these separate departments who never talk to each other, and then we all get together and we just unfuck it on the fly. <laughs> so this is the most important patch you need to see this year. 
or fuck it, we'll do it live. And we do that every year, and it works just fine, and it's because we have awesome, awesome staff. Aww. Yeah. Aww. We do, we do, we do. People that come to DEF CON know exactly what they're getting involved in. And it, so, so are you saying I need to order more of those patches? Yeah, thanks for the patch, by the way. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so, Priest, you want to go next? Okay. Okay. And dude, this number yeah, is going to send me off the goddamn chain. Just give us the this, number. This is the biggest number, and I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that number's classified. I'm sorry you're not clear <laughs> oh. for that compartment. It's, abo- it's above top secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, TSSCI green. Mm-hmm. Um, my name is Priest. I've been here since DEF CON 4. Um, I go by many names. Uh, they range from asshole to very mean, ugly white guy to holy shit, here he comes. Um, I am nominally... What's that? Oh. That's true. I, you know, I was saying, do I... How well do I know you? Red card. <laughs> I can't really see you past these lights. Who's speaking? <laughs> Something I should know about. <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. You know why? <laughs> I know why, but it would still be awesome. For us, not awesome. you. Yeah, for us. <laughs> my, my, wife, my wife is Chinese, and she's a nurse, which means she has access to sharp objects and knows how to use them. One of the most frightening like moments... Like we don't? Of, yeah. Well, not like she does. No, fair enough. One yeah. of the most frightening moments of my life is watching her cut a cucumber... With those little hatchets, the Chinese, just Chinese people in the eyes. She sits there with a smile on her face and just says this. <laughs> I, look like, I know exactly what you're thinking. I'll go cut the lawn. <laughs> anyway, I technically, my, my title is Minister Without Portfolio. I'm the uncle in the family that no one invites to the friendly parties, but the second Billy is in jail. I'm the guy who gets called. Uh, my job is effectively the shit collector. So if you're seeing me in an official capacity, it's probably a very, very bad moment for you. <laughs> and honest to God, my job is to try and help you through that moment. It's not to make that moment worse. I know it appears that I'm actually taking some type of sadistic glee. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not. That's all an act. That's all an act. Yeah, it is. I actually enjoy it quite a bit. Hey. Pyro. It's Pyro. Oh. Sorry. Hey, Priest. You brought me back. Priest. Do you remember DEF CON 9 and the, uh, the attendee that says, can you really take me down in less than a minute? <laughs> yes, Ed, I do remember that. <laughs> and I also remember what I did to them. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which is a very liberating thing for many I, of us. Uh, I used to play rugby. Uh, I did many, many years of martial arts and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's not the side of me that I hope you get to see. When I mention people who poop themselves at DEF CON, I have had cases where a young, a young lady became so drunk that she had her shoes stolen and in the middle of the hallway promptly shat herself oh. and proceeded to shat herself four or five times. <laughs> Including, including as she's being put into the, into the ambulance to be taken to the hospital. You tell the most wonderful stories. I do. <laughs> I, I had uh, one young lady whose boyfriend decided to mix methamphetamine, uh, cocaine, mushrooms, and LSD at the same time. Oh. Oh. Um, he went into cardiac arrest four times. Um, I have a medical background, and a gentleman who's with me ha- is a, what's called a special forces medic. Is anybody here familiar with what a special forces medic is? Could you raise your hand? You mean a doctor with a gun? Okay, so we just, I also do spot the Fed. The gentleman over here who raised his hand who knows what a special forces medic is, Fed. <laughs> that, that, that's not a Fed. That, that They're not very bright. Me. You can kind of catch him at stuff like that. Yeah, I got you. Uh, he did, he coded four times. The, the problem we had, and we revived him, and it's very rare for someone to come back from a, a situation where they're in arrest and live. I mean, the percentages in terms of CPR are very low. And it's not like the movies where they just spontaneously wake up. It's very, very rare to have that happen. This guy actually woke up, and it was, it was just kind of like, wow, that's never happened before. The problem we had, though, was his girlfriend also imbibed some of the similar substances. And as we're trying to get into the locked room that he's in dying, she's explaining that she can't open the door because she's dropped all her fingers. <laughs> So I, I had to reach down and grab something off the ground and said, here's your finger, sweetie. And she said, oh, thank you. And she opened the door. 
So that's the stuff that we're usually doing. We're, we're here to, in security. We're not here to make your life miserable. We're really here to try and make sure that everybody has the best time possible. And, and, and we want to ensure that we want that message of God. Yes, sometimes we are, at, are being assholes, but we have to be assholes because we, we don't want the real assholes from Vegas Metro to come in and make your lives miserable. And like I said, we want everybody to have a good time. We want you to enjoy the convention. We want to make sure it's safe and sane and there's no problems. And we have to do horrible things. Last year, I had to clear the Penn and Teller uh, uh, conference area. We had to. And I was a bad guy for it. And I, I apologize to the audience for doing it, but we had to do it. So if you see a red shirt, understand we're not colossal assholes because we want to be. We're colossal assholes because we have to be. How, how would you say the, assholes because you were how, how would you say the venue uh, impacts your job? I mean, for example, from the Riviera to here and the, and the AP, just the physical layout. From uh, 4 to 20, how bad has it gotten? <laughs> from 4 to 20? <laughs> 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 it's... The honest answer to that question has gotten progressively better. We as a community have matured. We as a community have, uh, for lack of a better term, grown up. You know, I, I see kids who I saw at DEF CON 5 bringing their kids to DEF CON 20. And that's really cool. And like I said, we matured. Before, I'm, we're dealing with, <laughs> I hacked the air conditioning in the tent where it's 115 degrees. Fuck, it's hot in here. <laughs> to... You know, hey, you know, we're trying to enjoy a speech, speaker here. Would you shut the fuck up, sit the fuck down? Uh, which, which is a nice thing to see, and it's gotten easier for us. We, we do appreciate that. And, and like I said, if you guys have problems, we are here to help, and we do want to help. And we want to make sure that you have the best time you can. Well, I, so. think, I think one of the ways you can characterize it, Priest, is at DEF CON 4, we did have the official DEF CON fuck you bat, which <laughs> we haven't had to bring out in a while. <laughs> we also had Seven on his knees being spanked by Pete <laughs> <laughs> I should go? Quickly, yes. Yeah. All right. We, have, it, we got the 10-minute warning. 10 minutes. All right. Yeah, see, I talk forever. They know to warn see. you in advance. Uh, I'm Pyro. I run all the public contest and events here at DEF CON. Actually, I don't. A team of about 16 that works with me does. There they go. <laughs> there they go. Did you hear that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, uh, Somebody take yeah. We, uh, it's, it's been an absolutely crazy year. Um, this year, we almost uh, increased our submissions about 33%. So right now, we're managing and we have 55 events and contests uh, that are um, operating at DEF CON this year. Definitely take the time to go out and check them out and visit these contests. These people put a lot of time and effort into it. But it's just interesting to watch it grow. I mean. I started doing contests, let's see, I worked security for you, DEF CON 7, I think was the first time, and that was a, you brought me in because of all the stuff, it was Manel and something oh, Christ, happening in her yes, room. Yes, yes, oh yes. God, I remember that shit. So oh since uh, Russ, oh Russ Why are you bringing up, do you hate me? Why are you bringing up all these bad memories? I mean, <laughs> first Ed, now you, and X. They're not bad for us. You know, fuck all you, I'm going home. Yeah, they're not bad for you. <laughs> Did, didn't you take us to shitting our pants? <laughs> What's that, you shat your oh. pants, what? Oh. I, you're complaining about that, but you shared a shit your pants. Yeah, story with yeah, us. yeah. I think it's only fair. <laughs> I so, didn't tell them it was you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they know. <laughs> Until. But we uh, we started managing and built a division out for contests. Uh, DC eight kind of formalized things and actually had some decent structure by about DC nine, DC ten. Uh, Russ Rogers ran that for a very long time. I was his second, and it's just been amazing to watch how things have grown. I mean, you look at the complexity of the contest and the amount of time that these people are taking to develop and build these contests for you, it's scary. They literally like start the day after DEF CON when they go home. Um, so please, please honor these people. Take the time to go see what they're doing. Stop by these tables, talk to them and ask them about, you know, what their event's about, what they're trying to accomplish. Oh, wait a second. There's no way I'm honoring Siv yet. <laughs> <laughs> you want to kiss his... Well, no, yeah, somebody already anyway. did that. Okay, so since we're pipping out talks, uh, tomorrow at 1400 hours, it's 2 o'clock, I'm doing a Meet the Men in Black. We are having some two and three star generals on a panel and from various intelligence agencies after Spot the Fed where you'll be able to ask them any question you want and they will answer your questions as honestly as they can. So, <laughs> definitely. That will be cool. Just one second, sir. Is that Good to see you. How are you? <laughs> Hold that thought. Questions at the end. We're almost done. We're almost there. But yeah, anyway, come in, 
do the contest and events, check it out. We've got them <laughs> scattered out uh, throughout all the different areas. There's stuff that goes on on stages at night, several different competitions that are, are very spectator-ish, um, but can participate. You know, if they're looking for contestants and, and people to be in this, raise your hand and try it. Doesn't matter if you do bad, you're up mm -hmm. there participating having fun, like yeah, try it. Or, or create a contest if, if uh, you're yeah. so inclined. And, Absolutely. Uh, when I, I send out the RFI, typically, well, next year it's going to be sent out probably four to five months before DEF CON. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> I have a staff making sure that's happening Should now. Should checks in the mail? He won't come in your mouth. Uh, py Pyro. Pyro. He's on protection. Yeah. Uh, what do you owe me still? A bottle. A, a what kind of bottle? Scotch. Of a very nice variety. Mm -hmm. Thank Why? you. Why? Because I missed two of my deadlines with networking. This year. <laughs> By the well, way, though, scotch? one of the things with the contest area that's really kind of neat, and you're right. I, I love to see people yep. that show up here and participate in contests. Time for questions. Because for they'll, they'll just oh, okay. All right. There is any kind of contest going on in there. And one of the coolest stories was from last year. Um, one of the guys decided to run the beard and mustache contest. Mm -hmm. And when I read online that we were going to have a beard and mustache contest at DEF CON, I guess the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. We have jumped the shark. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, are, are you kidding me? So. You know, I, I call Pyro up, I'm giving him the business, I'm like, you got a fucking beard contest? What's wrong with you? I went in there to watch the beard contest just to make fun of it. If you had told me that I would spend two hours of my time <laughs> in Las Vegas at DEF CON watching a beard contest, I'd have told you you were high. It was the funnest thing I have ever watched in my life. You're yeah, Redbeard's amazing. He yeah. is a, a hell of a stage presence. So, Definitely go watch his show. Whatever you want to do and participate in here, chances are he's going to let you. He's like, you know what, let's try it. If it sucks, then we won't do it again. But if it's cool, let's go with it. Wait, so, wait. I, I, I have a good idea for a contest, Pyro. I can't believe nobody's come up with this after 20 years. What's that? No, it's called Spot Dark Tangent. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be harder than the Fed. We, we won't That'd be giving out any shirts country. for that, I don't think. I, so, but before I, but before I uh, open up the panel to, to questions, we just have a few minutes, and if we don't get to your questions, go into the DEF CON forums, and, and staff members will, will be happy to go attend the that. Q&A room. Or grab it. Well, I, un unfortunately, and I, I don't know about everyone else, um, I think a lot of people, myself included, are uh, um, leaving our, our jobs that we should be at at DEF CON. Yeah, some of us to, work to, for a living speaker to, to be in this panel. So, um, garbage I, is empty. I, I, I would I, I would like to, to reiterate yeah, like and to mention talk. again that um, our entire staff loves DEF CON so much that we give up DEF CON to to help run it. Um, and so and we all miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's true. We we joke all the time about there's talks at DEF CON. The only way this year I've been able to go see talks is to actually give them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same here. Same here. I, I haven't seen a talk since four. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, and I, I just was saying it's been six since me. My first DEF CON, I saw talks, and then I started working. And I also <laughs> wake up at about eight in the morning and don't go to sleep until about three, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. This is how they take care of us, though. This year, there was, and I agree, I haven't been to a talk that I wasn't given in probably You're 10 just years. Drinking. What are you talking this about? This year, there was a talk that I, was, I wanted to see so bad. All, I, I, when we were looking at talks, I'm like, I, this talk has to be on the schedule. It gets approved. It's going on at the same fucking time as this. <laughs> <laughs> we planned so, that, by the way. Yeah, so I'm going to go buy some DVDs. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions? Any questions at all? You have two you minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, we have one. Stand up, sir. Yeah, he works for me. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's one of my goons. Yeah. Oh, oh over there. Yeah. So the question is, how does communication work or not work? Do you mean at the tactical level, the strategic level, the operational level, the accounting level, or uh, that level that we're not allowed to talk about? We uh, we have Nextels, and then before we get on the phone. <laughs> Oh, we have a big mailing list, and we just hash it out. We, yeah. out, we outsource right. to the Chinese. And base, shh, we don't talk about that thing. Yeah. And, and uh, conference the, calls as well. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is that we've, I mean, you've heard it, we've all been doing this for more than five years at least. So um, there's a surprising lack of communication because they're like, it's their department, they'll take care of it. And yeah, more, more, more or less, um, unless there's a problem, each team has a ridiculous amount of autonomy. Yeah. Um, and, and the people who run the teams are allowed to do pretty much anything they want as, as long as there's not a bit problem. And, and then if there is, and it's just discussed. But they, the teams run themselves. So. Well, and frankly, we've been doing this for so long 
I mean, it used to be we do three or four conference calls during pre-planning to make sure we were communicating and organizing and everybody knew what they were going to be doing. We had one this year which was like, okay, this department, yep, got it, got it. Got, uh, okay, well, everybody's, I mean, we've done this for so long, it's, it's almost down to an algorithm, like calling for garbage, um, that it just, it, it happens almost organically at this point. The other yeah, thing to use, take into consideration too is this is a family. I, I can't stress enough how this is community driven and we all know each other. We all work, a lot of us are competitors with each other professionally. But it's one of those things that if you pick up a phone and you go, hey dude, I need this. You may have not talked to that person since the last DEF CON and instantaneously they'll be on it. I mean, we all operate together as a team. Yep. Yeah, I understand. We started off with a project tracking tool, Basecamp. Most of you know that. We start off with that. We have emails that go crazy. And if you really get confusion, a phone call will happen. We all have each other's cell phone numbers. Uh, we've seen Basecamp this year started in what, October? There's a large meeting at DT's yeah, Secret Lair yeah. in Davos. The Davos system. Yeah, Davos, yeah. And, and any uh, other questions before we, uh, we might, uh, so Actually, the people you know, that can stay here for Q&A will we'll go into the Q&A room. I'm not sure if that's anyone. You know, we could just run over. I mean, no, <laughs> no we can't yeah, run over the boss after, after all. Yeah, awesome. okay. yeah, right. You heard it here first. Yeah. 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 Any okay. other questions? Very yes, fast. yes, a thousand times yes. Hi. Thanks, thanks Thank for coming to DEF CON. Thank you. See you again. Yeah.